Good day, my name is Laksh Bell and today I want to talk to you about misconceptions and misinformation because there's a lot of it out there on the internet. So I saw this video, I came across this video on YouTube, it's called Inflation Explained in 6 Minutes and I this is the first video I'm seeing on this channel by Johnny Harris. This video currently has 1.1 million views and I've never seen this uh, channel before so this is my very first encounter with this channel and seems to be a very popular video which is what attracted me to it. It's a well-produced video. The problem is there are a lot of misconceptions that I want to clear out today. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to watch this video and then we're going to respond to what uh, he says, what the author says and how he explains, uh, explains the inflation. And we're going to try to see uh, if we can make some corrections or maybe suggest some possible alterations to this video to make more sense of the situation. So let's get started. We'll watch this video from the start. No fancy music, I just... No, no cool intro, no fancy music. I just want to explain inflation in six minutes. I have a degree in economics. I spent years trying to understand this. So the first thing to note is that the author has a degree in economics and um, that doesn't necessarily mean that he understands economy as well as... Uh, uh, anybody else really who doesn't have a degree in economics because a degree in economics just gives you some ideas about economics and ne not necessarily the truth which remains to be found which remains to be discovered but I've found the academics are more uh, rigid about their version of the truth about the economics and the economic models uh, which is what we're going to see in this video I have one particular moment that we'll get to where he talks about something that I completely disagree with and it's a subject for debate. We can talk about that. So let's uh, watch this video. So let's see if I can boil it down. What is inflation? Why is it rising? Why are people worried? And what do interest rates have to do the with it? The Federal Reserve is raising the Fed interest rate to raise interest rates. Highest rate. inflation in 40 years. Listen, I know that I make long videos. I'm into nuance. I'm into backstory. Well, this isn't that. This is quick. 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 No, really. This is quick. Let's go. Wait, 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 rewind. Hold on one second. Before we start the timer, I need to tell you that I was going to do an ad read in the middle of the explanation. Like I was going to stop okay, the so explanation an and do this Let's panel to cap set part of and cut the thumb cue. Thank you, BetterHelp, for do this explanation in six minutes. Here we go. Okay, first up, the simplest definition. Inflation is when there is more money in the economy than stuff to spend it on. That doesn't even make sense, Okay. Like, how do you mean there's more money than stuff to spend it on? There's always going to be more money in terms of units of currency. So I don't even know what that means. Now, what he means to say probably is that inflation means when there is relatively more money now, as compared to a previous reference point in the past, then there is growth in the rate of stuff or the rate of economic energy, the true economic energy, products and services, so to speak, um, uh, compared to the same reference point in the past. But if you're like me, the simplest definition never does it for you. So let's try this. Imagine a village that has one market where people buy all of their stuff, their food, their clothes. But one day the government shows up because they're worried about the economy of this village. So they tell the people that if they want to take out a loan, they're going to make sure that the banks will not charge them a high interest rate. They want to encourage the people to take out loans and spend money. Oh, and they also drop off a giant pile of cash for everyone in the village. And everyone in the village is like, sweet, I'm feeling pretty rich. Village well, they're only feeling rich if they take out those loans. For those who do not take out the loans, there really is no bearing of the interest rate until the cycle begins, which it always inevitably does. Uh, but you're not just going to start feeling rich if the interest rates go down. You're going to start feeling rich if you are leveraged in one way or another, which in more cases uh, than not, you now probably are because salaries have to go up when that happens because a certain section of the economy is going to take on the loans. Uh, but anyway, this kind of checks out. Uh, it's just not direct. It's, an, uh, uh, it's not a direct correlation. It's an indirect correlation. Going to their market and they're buying way more stuff. Many of them have been eyeing the fancy electric bike in the market that before they couldn't justify, but now they totally can because they have all this new money. The store owner's like, sweet, this is great for business. The other thing to mention is that just because the interest rates are low doesn't mean you're credit worthy. So that is also something to keep in mind. But more or less, this checks out. But he's running out of bikes. In fact, he's running out of everything because now all of these people have extra money and they're buying way more than they used to. The store owner's like, I can't keep up with all this demand. I should raise prices. And that is inflation. But the village is... 
No, inflation is a transfer of wealth. Inflation is not the, the consequence of inflation is that prices grow up. But a lot of people think that just because prices went up, that is inflation. That's not true. Prices of goods are contingent upon supply and demand. And if you don't believe me, check out the prices of graphic cards, graphic GPUs, basically graphic cards, computer gaming cards in 2020 versus 2022. The same card that was going on eBay used for three grand is now selling for a thousand bucks brand new from all the retailers, Best Buy, uh, Micro Center, so on and so forth, Amazon. So uh, does that mean we don't have any inflation? Infl of course we do. Everybody knows we have inflated our currency enormously from 2020 to 2022, but we still have decreasing prices in a lot of cases. Ask the cryptocurrency owners, right? Ask, um, ask people who own uh, basically gold and silver. Gold is down, silver is down. So um, yeah, maybe not over a two-year period. I think gold is slightly up over a two-year period, but largely silver is down and gold is largely static. So does that mean that there is no inflation? That's not true at all. Um, so one of the consequences of inflation is that in general, prices go up. But what inflation is in reality is theft. It's basically taking money from the pockets of savers and putting it into the pockets of those who borrow, right? The money at cheap rate, uh, as we've already seen. But we'll talk more about that in a minute. Is all of us, and the market is the entire economy. When there's extra money floating around and people want to spend it faster than businesses... There's never extra money floating around. I mean, did you have extra a stream of extra money floating around outside your house any day? I mean, did you wake up and open your door and was there a stream of... $100 bills floating around? No, it doesn't happen that way, right? Um, you had to, uh, if you were in the United States, if you were a US citizen, you got some checks from the government, but those checks were barely able to keep up, uh, you know, uh, satisfy the daily requirements of your life, depending upon your quality of life. They were probably not even enough to take care of one week of expenses, let alone an entire month. So um, there's never a stream of money. What happens with inflation or with money printing, let's talk about money printing first. So what happens with money printing is that the printed money goes to certain entities such as the government. Government borrows that money from the Federal Reserve, which is basically passed on to you as a cost because you, as a citizen of the country, are responsible and your progeny, your children, even if you don't have them, if you plan to someday have children, they are responsible to pay off that debt, which government gets to spend today. So imagine I was the government and you were a citizen. Well, I could borrow money without your consent but you would be responsible to pay that off. That is money printing. That is inflation. This can make stuff in all of the businesses, in all of the industries, raise their prices. And that is inflation. It's a natural part of the economy. It's kind of a good thing in small doses because it means that the economy is growing. No, 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 no. 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 It's not a good thing. Not in small doses. Not in large doses. It's never a good thing. Look, imagine there's a room of people, 10 people, and there are 10 apples in the room, and everyone has one silver coin, okay? So each of those apples is worth one silver coin. Now, I'm a sneaky person, so what I do is, I go out into the market, somehow figure out a way to counterfeit those sneaky, uh, silver coins, put 10 of those coins in my pocket, and come into the room. I'm the 10th person in that room, okay? Now, all of a sudden, there are 19 coins, Okay, or let's make it simpler. There are 20 coins. Okay, I'm the 11th person. I was not in the room initially. I got to go out to the market, get 10 of those coins, get in there. And now I start trading my coins for those apples. I start trading each and every one person in that room. And I say to them, hey, here's a silver dollar or a silver coin and give me your apples. And in the beginning, people realize, oh, that's just one silver coin, you know. Uh, so that's a fair trade. So they take my silver coin and give me an apple. Then the second person realizes, hey, how do I have more money now? So they're like, I'm not so sure, you know, I want more. So I say, hey, uh, this is a silver coin and this is half of a silver coin. So I get another uh, apple. And sooner or later, the market stabilizes and then now the price of each of those apples is two silver coins instead of one, except the people in the beginning who sold me their silver coins, uh, sold me their apples in exchange for a single silver coin or less than two silver coins, which would be everybody, they got screwed in the process. Their wealth was stolen from them. Apple represents the actual wealth, actual product that you can consume, actual consumable. Silver, 
I could just go out and get more of it into that particular room. That's how inflation works. So it's money, it's wealth flowing from the pockets of honest people into the pockets of those who somehow manage to take advantage of this inflation, either through borrowing, if you're smart, you should do that, or through just printing money. If you're the government, absolutely you would want to do that if you understood how this scam works. So anybody who says that it's good in small doses is lying to you. Actually, over time, the productivity goes up. It's much easier to produce the same goods and services that were much more expensive in the past. So imagine uh, Henry Ford producing cars. You know, cars were a lot more valuable back then because only a small section of the society could afford them, even if they were just a few hundred dollars a piece because the dollar was that much stronger. Now, if the dollar had held its value, cars would be worth less than $100 a piece. They're just worth thousands and thousands of dollars because the dollar itself has been devalued. So don't let anyone tell you that inflation is good in small doses because the only people who'd like to convince you of that are economists like this guy, academics, who eventually get hired by the government and benefit from that printed money. It's never good. And you have to understand, I mean, if... if there's a 2.5% inflation every year, and you take that over 100 years, well, guess what? The prices go up by 11.8%. That means over 90% of the value of your currency has been taken out, has been sucked away, has been thrown into the pockets of money printers. Remember that. Anytime someone tells you that small doses of inflation is good for the economy, they are practically just lying. It's not how it works. If we had a true economy, if we had a true currency, which could not be modified, which was immutable, what you would have is a deflationary currency. So everything would cost less, not more, over time. Because productivity goes up, so you are able to buy more of that stuff for the same amount of currency. And it's why movie tickets used to be 25 cents and now they're like 15 so movies were, movie tickets were like 25 cents and now they're $15 and soon they'll be $20, $25, $50, $100 a piece. The entertainment quotient of that movie did not just go up, okay? It's still a two to three hour production. The production value might have gone up, but all of this increase in prices of goods is because someone else stole that money from you through printing and they do it all the time. The, the government's well, not the governments. Governments get to do it through the Federal Reserve, which is not a government entity, but we'll talk about that. Anybody who's printing something is stealing money from you. Dollars. And slowly over time, it's fine. Okay, let's go. Why? Why is it fine over time? I don't get it. This guy will never explain to you why it's fine over time. He's just going to say it's fine over time. I'll tell you why he says that. It's because he gets to benefit from it somehow. <laughs> go back to the village and see what happens if we keep going at this rate. Probably. The store owner... I don't know who this guy is, so I'm not sure. I'm just not making a claim. I'm just saying that's the kind of stuff that people who benefit from this kind of money printing often say. ...has now doubled his prices on bikes. The interest rate is super low, so he takes out a loan to build a new factory to make bikes. This is good. He's growing a business. But the government money eventually runs out, and his prices are still double. But now the store owner has no one to come buy all of his new bikes. And now he has this factory, and more employees but no customers he has to shut down the factory lay off everyone and slowly start lowering his prices except his cost basis has gone up so if you're a business owner who expanded because the economy was great and you did not consider that everything is cyclical especially when it's fueled by debt you have debt fueled growth followed by debt fueled crashes they are inevitable anytime you have growth fueled by debt you're going to have a crash fueled by the same debt because those debts need to be repaid. Those chickens come home to roost. So his cost basis has gone up because someone printed the money, right? And we don't know who that is. Maybe, right? Someone printed the money and all of his raw materials went up in price. He has to pay higher wages because the cost of living went up. His rent on that warehouse, on that manufacturing unit is up. The cost of equipment is up. Everything is up. So his cost basis has gone up and he can only lower the prices so much before he starts going into the red. This is called recession. Wait. So recession is essentially a natural economic consequence 
of that boom period that you had initially. When COVID shut down the world, governments gave us money, free money. They're like, don't panic and hoard all your money. Instead, spend and borrow and keep the economy going. Here in the US, they literally sent us $3,200 checks. They gave 600 bucks a week to people who were unemployed for months and months and months. They gave subsidies to people with kids. They increased spending on food stamps. I mean, trillions and trillions of dollars of stimulus money. This was vital aid to people in need. But even people who didn't lose a job got a check in the mail. It was free money for everyone. And we spent it. I just picked up myself a new bike. Demand is up across the country. It's time to grind, Peloton. We all just got these big checks from the government. During a pandemic, we're like, YOLO, I'm buying a boat or a Peloton or whatever. Pokemon cards. Here's Netflix. This is another consequence of having too much money in the system, by the way. Um, when you give people free money, people who are largely, and that's most of the people who are largely irresponsible with money, will go out and spend it on stuff they don't even need. And in many cases, they'll just use that money to put a down payment, make a down payment for something that they did not need in the first place, like a big boat, and stuff that they cannot really afford. The only reason they can put that down payment uh, into, the, uh, into the equity is because um, they have free money. If they didn't have that free money, they would have to work for it and somehow become more productive to the economy and get more money as a consequence of their increased productivity before they could think about uh, getting that boat or bike or whatever. Fortnite. A new motor. Peloton. It's so in a hot tub. Animal Crossing. Push it out a little bit. So it's no, so don't you it. dare. But pair all this new spending with the fact that the pandemic also made it harder for factories and ships and retailers to get us all this stuff. Supply chain issue. Global supply chain. Supply chain. Supply chain. So now you have an economy where people have way more money than normal and they're ready to spend it, but the economy can't get them stuff fast enough. So what do businesses do with all this insane new demand? They raise prices all at the same time and this would have happened even if the supply chain issues did not exist even if we did not have a pandemic if we just printed money if the government just printed money and somehow handed it for any reason handed it to the people and to themselves of course in the process right um everyone would go out and spend money and that would increase the demand whereas the supply would remain constant it would take some time for supply to catch up with the demand increasing demand so the prices would skyrocket for the time being so this was compounded, of course, during the pandemic because supply chain issues were a very real thing. That is true. But this would, have, this would have happened nevertheless, anyhow, even if it was just a minuscule printing every year, like this guy says, would be great for the economy. That is inflation. I feel Inflation is not caused by supply chain issues, by the way. Supply chain issues only cause uh, prices to go up and down. That's it. If there's a supply chain issue, the prices will go up. That's not necessarily inflation. Inflation causes prices to go up, which is why probably this guy and a lot of other people conflate the two things. Inflation is different from supply chain issues. Inflation is caused by printing of money. So supply chain issues can cause the prices to temporarily or permanently go up. But inflation will always cause the prices to go up long term. I feel like we're getting this at this point. But we do interest It's by the way, it's why people in the 1960s and 70s were able to, on one salary, start a family, raise kids, buy a house, buy a car, and not have a second job or a second part-time job. It was possible. And now, if it's two people married or living together, they have to work together to share the rent or mortgage payments. They're sharing the car payments, maybe, if they're lucky, they have two cars. And they're like, we can't really afford to have kids, even if they want to, because everything is so much more expensive and their wages have gone up, but not quite as much. Rates have to do with all this. Raising the interest rate. Interest rate. Or the Fed. Fed is Federal Reserve. The federal so before we talk about the interest rates, we have to talk about why this matters. Inflation, on the whole, is dealt. People doing the inflation, people causing the inflation are the winners and everybody else is the loser and that includes you. Everybody else, anybody else who gives you a different definition of inflation other than money printing is lying to you. Anybody who says inflation is a good thing if it's in small doses over time because it signifies growth is lying to you. Anytime you print money and fuel consumption, you're going to cause a recession. It's just cyclical. It's like the sine wave. Okay, you have growth fueled by debt and then you have shrinkage because those debts need to be repaid. Except the government does not repay its own debt 
ever. They expect you to do it for them and your children to do it for them and their children to do it for them. What we have is the modern version of slavery. Reserve. Most countries have a central bank, the puppet master of the economy, the bank of all banks for that country. But it's not like a normal bank that stores our money and then lends it out and collects interest to make profit. Nope. This guy does not understand economics. Banks don't need your money to lend out money. They have something called fractional reserve and they lobby together to increase the reserve ratio. So if you deposit $1 with them, they can go out and lend 10, 20, 30, $50 with that money, depending upon the fractional reserve ratio, which is in turn set by the government or the central bank of particular nations. But for the most part, banks don't need your money to lend out the money. They just need somebody's money and they need to have a base. And they can multiply that base by any factor that their central bank and their government agrees on. You can see they're all in on it. But he's right. Your central bank is not like the bank. You cannot go deposit money or withdraw money from the central bank. Only the government can do that. That's what a normal private bank does. The central bank, which we call the Fed here in the U.S., is run by the government. Ew. Dude, did you really go to school? <laughs> um... No, no, he was probably just busy um, uh, learning how to make YouTube videos, which great content, by the way, uh, great production value, by the way, but not great content. Um, no, federal bank is independent, at least in the United States. And uh, from what I can tell, most of the world, the central banks are independent of the government. In fact, someone, and uh, I'm not sure who, who it was, so I'm not going to name any names here, but someone said, I do not care who makes the laws as long as, long as I can print money or I can control the money supply of that uh, country. And uh, yeah, the government has basically very little to do with the federal bank other than they issue bonds and basically they get money out of the federal bank, but they're just borrowing from the federal bank and they, government, need to repay to the federal bank, except they have no money to repay ever. And they're always in the hole. So they keep on borrowing because they need likes to spend, right? Governments like to spend. Um, so they keep on borrowing and they keep on spending and you are held accountable for repaying that debt. So congratulations. But understand that the federal bank, especially in the United States, is not run by the government. Don't let the name federal fool you. It's not run by the U.S. government, not run by the federal government. The bank, the government has nothing to do with the bank. So their job is to set the rules or policies that all the other banks have to follow. And the central bank isn't motivated by profit, but rather their job is to babysit the economy, to keep it growing. To... They're not motivated by the profit because they don't need the profit. They can just print the money. Make sure people have jobs, to make sure that prices don't fluctuate too much so that we can keep growing nicely. No slowdown, no recession. That is what the Fed is there for. If you needed no slowdown, no recession, you needed constant growth, just abolish the central banks and you're going to have it immediately. The reason why you have crashes is because of that fueling debt, that debt that fuels that money. If normal banks had to be held accountable for every instance of debt they handed out, if the manager had to know the borrower and know their situation in particular in order to be able to lend out that money and if they had to understand a business plan and if they had to be sure that they were over collateralized at all times, you would never have a recession. Ever, because banks would ensure that their money, that they're lending out, that their depositors' money, which they are lending out without a fractional reserve ratio, comes back to them because they need to pay back their depositors. So banks would be held accountable and they would hold accountable whoever they lent out that money to. You wouldn't have all this free money in circulation and this free money goes to the banks, by the way. Banks create free money because of fractional reserve ratio, like I explained. Uh, and Federal Bank does that, uh, Federal Reserve done, does that, or the central bank in your country does that just by printing money. Whether it's the, uh, whether, you, whether they call it the central bank or the reserve bank or the federal bank does not make a difference. They just print money. That's their job. But seriously, the Fed is like a puppet master. That part is true. They are a puppet master. And we are the puppets, and it's kind of creepy. They pull strings in the economy to get us to spend our money in a certain way, which in turn affects how much businesses raise or drop their prices. And guess what? It totally works. One of the strings that they have to pull in the economy is called the interest rate. Want to borrow money to buy a car or a house or expand your business? You're going to be way more likely to do that if you only have to pay 2% interest on that loan as opposed to like 6%. Lower interest rates 
equal people and businesses want to borrow and spend money. So during the pandemic, the central bank was like, we need everyone to spend money. So they lowered the interest rate. That is true. This part is true. If the interest play, rate is low and people have the credit worthiness to be able to borrow money, then they'll go out and spend it on something. Sometimes they spend it on useful stuff, you know, um, economic stuff, useful, economically useful stuff like building a business or building some real estate, so on and so forth. Other times they just go out and spend it on useless stuff, which they don't really need, like a third car or a third vacation home, which uh, frankly um, you should buy if you have the money. Uh, but you shouldn't really get a lot of uh, debt in order to do that. And people borrowed and people spent and it totally worked. We're like free. It works so well that we have gas prices that are approaching $6 a gallon now, right? It works well, didn't it? Freaking puppets. So a low interest rate helps stimulate the economy. But once again, we're in this same place where there's now too much money to borrow and spend and not enough goods and services to spend it on. So... There is a supply chain issue, but even if the number of goods and services, the amount of goods and services had not gone down due to the pandemic, you would have the exact same situation because of all the relentless printing. That is what is causing all this inflation. What do businesses do all at the same time? They raise prices to meet all this new demand all at the same time. And now your money is worth less. And that Businesses are not raising prices to meet the demand. This is an abjectly false statement. Businesses ask any small business owner that you might know, are raising prices because their cost basis is going up. They need to pay more if they're renting, they need to pay a higher expense in terms of rent, their uh, payments are going up, their wages are going up, their insurance costs are going up, their raw materials are up in prices, their services that they need to avail of in order to produce that product or service that you use is becoming more and more expensive. They don't really have a choice and the responsibility for that lies with the Federal Reserve and the government who basically create these debt-fueled cycles by printing money. You should understand that anybody who tries to explain away the increasing prices by a supply chain issue is only trying to pull wool over your eyes because the supply chain issues would not have explained why you have thousands of container ships all around the United States waiting to get into the port and offload goods. You have that right now. I spent a lot of time in Florida during the pandemic and I can tell you right now that you could see ships circling the coast of Florida just waiting to dock into the port and get goods offloaded. How do you explain that? That is inflation. <laughs> Home prices rising at their highest rate. Bidding Rents are going up by nearly 24%. So the supply of houses did not really go down except the prices of houses went up astronomically. Why? Thank the Federal Reserve. So that's what's happening right now. All the prices are rising kind of at the same time. What that means is that your $100 bill is now worth 8% less than it was last year. So it's bad when it's worth 8% less, but it's good when it's worth 2% less because you would not have noticed. Is that what this guy is telling you? Like the same money is worth less because your purchasing power just got diluted. And imagine if that keeps happening. Like instead of 8%, it's 50%. Or 2%. 2% is insidious. 50% you would notice. 8% you're noticing. Actually, it's not 8%. It's more like 25%. Uh, but anyway, you're noticing it, right? 2% uh, you would probably not notice. And then there would be no hype about it. And no one would be worried about it. And everything is fine and dandy. We have a gravy train. Choo-choo. Now your $100 bill is worth what $50 used to be. And that's when people start to freak out. And our economy that's built on human psychology starts to falter. And we fall into a recession or a depression even. So we fall into a recession and depression when people start freaking out. But people don't freak out with a 2% inflation every year or a 3% inflation every year. However, it is theft just the same. If you had a million dollars, let's say, and if I stole $10,000, you would notice it, wouldn't you? Except you don't when the governments do it because you still, it still says 10000 on your bank account. You just don't realize that million dollars does not buy uh, as much as a million dollars a year ago or two years ago. It keeps on buying less and less stuff as you go on in time. Million dollars is worth less and less money as you go on in time. If it gets real bad, which is exactly what the Fed is built to avoid. No, it isn't. It is built to cause this. So they're back to pulling their strings and they've started raising rates. The Federal Reserve is raising interest the rates. Federal Reserve taking action to try and curb rising inflation. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, okay? But you have to ask yourself, who gains from creating all these supply chain issues? 
And of course, you can blame the pandemic, but it's now close to being over. We still have supply chain issues, nevertheless. And secondly, why is the Fed raising the interest rates at this time? What is it that they hope to achieve? And the only consequence of both these actions colliding is that you get to suffer. Everything you want is going to be more and more expensive. Gas is $6 a gallon now. It's going to be $8 and $10 a gallon soon. When gas prices go up, everything else goes up, tends to go up, because you need gas to transport goods from one place to another. Okay, you go to the spa. Well, they have this nice little bed that you lie down on. Guess what? When it breaks, it's going to cost them twice as much or three times as much to buy another replacement for that bed because the gas prices went up. Because someone had to manufacture that and they had to use, guess what? Truckers or transportation of some kind in order to get the wood and the other raw materials into their manufacturing unit, into their factory in order to build that bed for you. So everything tends to go up when the gas goes up, gas prices go up. So they're gently raising the interest rate to cool down all of this hardcore spending and borrowing. See if they can steer the ship back on course. And let's hope it works. Let's not. Hope is not a strategy. Okay, do we do okay so that was it. Uh, that was the gist of that video. And uh, yeah, the amount of misinformation out there is just astounding. People just don't seem to get or maybe deliberately try to mislead their viewers, I don't know what this guy is doing. Either he doesn't get it or he's deliberately trying to mislead you uh, into believing whatever it is that he's trying to preach. But that's not how the economy works. That's not how inflation works. And that's not why inflation is good if it's in uh, healthy, tiny little quantities every year. If I stole 2% of your wealth every year for 100 years, guess what? I would have stolen more than 90% of your wealth. And you might not have noticed it, but it's still criminal just the same. It's still criminal. If I steal 2% of your wealth just once and I get caught doing that, it's still criminal for me. It's just not criminal for the governments to be doing it or the central banks to be doing it. You have to understand that they're not your friend. In another video, I'll probably talk about the possible solutions to this and how you can benefit from the whole situation because there are, remember, two winning parties to this, the printers, of course, and the borrowers. That's the second winning party to this. We'll talk about that. Uh, but... Um, yeah, in the end, if you are an honest person who's trying to work hard and who doesn't try to steal other people's wealth, well, you're getting screwed in this process and there is no way for you to win. And uh, sadly, that's the reality of the world that we live in. And anybody who's trying to tell you uh, that, oh, it would have been okay if they only stole 2 or 3% of your wealth every year, that would have been totally fine. And that's apart from taxation, by the way. <laughs> They still continue to tax you every year. And I'm not anti-government. I mean, I'm, I might sound like an anti-government conspiracy theorist, but I'm just talking about economic facts here. So they continue to tax you on top of that inflation that you already have. Um, congratulations. What you have is a recipe for disaster. And let's not hope that it's going to work out because it's not going to work out. All right. That's it from me. Avoid misinformation, I hope. Um, if you like this video, by the way, go ahead and subscribe to this channel, like it, share it with all your friends so that they are not misinformed and they don't fall victim to all this misinformation uh, because that happens all the time, uh, frankly. And there's no way to avoid it other than speaking out about it, which is what I'm trying to do, which is what my goal is with this video. Again, I have no personal, uh, personal or professional animosity with this guy. This guy is producing some um, highly polished videos with a lot of misinformation. And that seems to be the gist of my beef with uh, what he's producing. Thanks for watching this video. Have a great day.